Hi to all, I am Paolo Scaramuccia, application engineer at ST Microelectronics. Today I'm going to show you how to easily implement a DCDC application using eDesign Suite and the new simulation tool EDSIM. The obtained result will be compared with a bench measurement. We will compare the, the following simulated and acquired data the eDesign Suite efficiency, the eDesign Suite junction temperature, the eDesign power up procedure the EDSIM output voltage ripple for constant current operation, the EDSIM output voltage during the long transition. Let's start from the eDesign main page. On first, select the power management design center, then the power supply design tool, then the DCDC, the not isolated, and finally the back topology. Let's see now the application specs. The input voltage from 6 to 24 volt, the output voltage equal to 3.3 .3 volt and the output current equal to 3 amp. Select then the L6983 C PAN number. Press the button design and so let's see the schematic. The suggested output capacitor is equal to 100 microfarad with an ESR resistance equal to 50 milliohm. The suggested main inductor is equal to 10 microarray. Let's change the inductor choosing the XL5050 from Coicraft. This is the L6983 evaluation board. Let me underline some point important. Here we have the input capacitor placed as close as possible to the device in order to reduce the stray inductance. Here we have the main inductor of the, of the board. Here we have the output capacitors. Let me underline also in the bottom side of the board two EMI filters. The filters are not related to the application but improve the device performance in terms of EMI. According to the e-design schematic, I have modified the main inductor, the output capacitor, the switching frequency resistor, and the feedback network in order to obtain 3.3 volt. As output voltage. The picture shows the implemented schematic. This is the main inductor. The suggested output capacitor is here. This is the switching frequency resistor. And this is the new feedback resistor. The design tool shows the estimated application efficiency. With the input voltage equal to 24 volt, it is about 85%. The estimated application efficiency with the input voltage equal to 12 volt is about 86%. In order to acquire the efficiency, I have implemented the following setup. The power supply and four different multimeters. One for the input voltage, one for the output voltage, one for the input current and one for the output current. The required output current has been set with the active load. The efficiency acquired at 24 volt is equal to 84%. The same measure for the input voltage equal to 12 volt, even efficiency around 85%. For input voltage equal to 12 volt, the estimated junction temperature is equal to 70 degree. With a thermal camera, it is possible to verify the device junction temperature. Now, pressing the button export for ADSIM, a pop-up window appears. It is possible to define the project name and then download the file. Double click on the batch file in the downloaded folder and finally double click on the simplest file. As you can see, the tool shows the customized schematic. To compare the simulation result with the bench measure, I have modified the evaluation board of the device. I have connected a load resistor to have a 3 amp output current. Then I have connected the ground ring to have a better measure of the output voltage and the switching node. I have also acquired the measure of the inductor current, connecting in this way the inductor. Let's start the comparison analyzing the power-up procedure. So, on first run the simulation. At the end of the simulation, on the right windows appears all the device main waveforms. To test the power-up procedure, I have connected the board to the power supply 
and enable pin to a single generator. The following picture shows the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 24V. The following picture shows the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 12V. Let's now verify the difference between the simulated and acquired voltage ripple for constant output current. Change the simulation parameter, click on simulator, choose analysis and then change the start time save data from 0 to 1.95 milliseconds. Press OK and run the simulation. On the right are shown the main waveform. To test the output voltage ripple for constant current operation, I have connected the enable pin of the device to the input voltage. The following picture show the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 12V. The following picture show the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 24V. As it is easy to see, the simulated v ripple is higher than the acquired one. In order to improve the simulation result, it is necessary to reduce the amount of the capacitor ESR, setting the value to 10 million. The simulation results are now closer to the bench measure. Let's now verify the difference between the simulated and acquired device behavior during a fast and wide load transition. In order to simulate the load transition, let's add to the schematic the PWL current source. The table shows the required yield defined on the current source. The current rises from 0.25 amp to 3 amp with a slope equal to 0.1 ampere over microsecond. In order to evaluate the device behavior during a load transition, I have connected the evaluation board to the power supply and I have connected the active load. The active load has been set as described in the table previously. The following graph shows the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 12V. The following picture shows the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for the input voltage equal to 24V. To simulate the overcurrent protection, it is necessary to modify the simplest schematic. Add the resistor to set a constant current equal to 0.25 Amp. Add a voltage controlled switch and a voltage source to properly drive it. Finally, add the current probe to acquire the short current. The voltage source has been configured as shown in the table in order to have a very fast and wide load transition. Set the input voltage equal to 12V. Let's change the simulation parameter and then run the simulation. On the right, it is possible to see the main waveforms. In order to test the device operation during the overload condition, I have connected the evaluation board to the active load. The active load has been set like reported in the table described previously. The following picture show the comparison result between the oscilloscope data and the simplest one for Vuin equal to 12V. As we have seen, eDesign Suite and DedSim show a good comparison between bench measure and simulation result. Thank you and stay tuned for the next video.